Um, let's pray. Wonder working God, we thank you for being the God of everything. We ask, oh God, that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive the word of life, the word of hope, the word of joy, the word of peace that we need today. Let Rachel decrease so that you will increase. In the strong name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. If y'all could do me a solid, if you could open up your Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 6, I would like to read nine verses. I'd like to read verses 3 through 11. Daniel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 3. Daniel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 3. When you have that, say man. Um, full disclosure, I am going to read it from the New International Reader's Version, which is a version of the New International Version that is designed for third graders. Um, listen for the word of God. Daniel 6, beginning at verse 3. Daniel 6, beginning at verse 3. Daniel did a better job than the other two leaders or any of the royal rulers. He was an unusually good and able man. So the king planned to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. But the other two leaders and the royal rulers heard about it. So they looked for a reason to bring charges against Daniel. They tried to find something wrong with the way he ran the government, but they weren't able to. They couldn't find any fault with his work. He could always be trusted. He never did anything wrong, and he always did what he was supposed to. Finally, these men said, we want to bring charges against this man, Daniel, but it's almost impossible for us to come up with a reason to do it. If we find a reason, it will have to be in connection with the law of his God. So the two leaders and the royal rulers went as a group to the king. They said, King Darius, may you live forever. All the royal leaders, high officials, royal rulers, advisors, and governors want to make a suggestion. We've agreed that you should give an order and you should make sure it's obeyed. Your majesty, here is the command you should make your people obey for the next 30 days. Don't let any of your people pray to any God or human being except to you. If they do, throw them into the lion's den. Now, give the order. Write it down in the law of Medes and Persians. Then it can't be changed. So King Darius put the order in writing. Daniel found out that the king had signed the order. In spite of that, he did just as he had always done. He went home to his upstairs room, its windows open toward Jerusalem. He went to his room three times a day to pray. He got down on his knees and gave thanks to God. Some of the other royal officials went to where Daniel was staying. They saw him praying and asking God for help. I'd like to spend a little time with you today encouraging us to engage in the ultimate act of resistance. To engage in the ultimate act of resistance. Now, full disclaimer, um, I need y'all to know that if any of y'all have read The Color Purple or seen any version of the movie, whether the original from the 80s, or you went to the stage music, musical or you saw it, um, I, I, I am really more 
of, um, how shall I put this? I'm more of the sister who's gonna fight you if you raise your hand to me um, than, than the sister who's gonna bite her tongue and take it. Um, I, 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 I am more of a Queen Vashti kind of person than a Queen Esther kind of person. Um, I'm, I, I'm more of a three Hebrews. If you think I'm a bow to your statue king, ain't no way I'm going to bow kind of person. I'm more of an in your face kind of person. Um, I, I'm sure some of y'all have figured out that I don't typically bite my tongue. I don't typically back down from a fight. Um, but Daniel does something in this particular text that models how Jesus responds to the unjust laws and in unjust situations that will come up in the world thousands, hundreds of years later when he's walking the earth. Um, instead of going low, when our enemies come at us lowly, you know, chucking and driving, manipulating, using their words to twist reality so that it sounds right, even when they know it straight up is wrong. And then using those very same words to manipulate people who are vulnerable enough that they look to them for advice, but aren't wise enough to check out whether their advisor's advice is actually sound. I'm, 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 I'm saying something. It is important to consult other people and get their advice on how you handle situations, but you need to pay attention to whether or not the people who you're going to for advice are actually doing what is in the best interest of everybody or if it's just in their own best interest. King Darius inherits a vast kingdom when his people take over Babylon. They also take over the Jewish people. So instead of just having to rule his own folk, he's got to rule the Babylonians. Instead of just having to rule his own folk and the Babylonians, he's also got to rule the Jews. This is a huge territory, y'all. And so it's wise to delegate authority when you're dealing with something that's too big for you to control all by yourself. That makes sense. But if you have people advising you who are neither trustworthy nor out to make sure that the best outcome comes for everybody, then you set yourself up to be tricked and manipulated. King Darius is such a dude. Um, he knows that the job is too heavy, but he trusts people to advise him who he neither takes the time to know, nor does he take the time to know the rest of the folk in the kingdom. To the point, they can lie to his face and he can't tell it's a lie. Seriously. Clearly he knows that Daniel is a man of God because later on in the story, he goes to Daniel and says, well, you know, I can't do nothing to help you. I know you didn't do anything wrong. I know that you were going to keep worshiping your God because that's the kind of dude you are. You're the kind of man of faith that if trouble comes, you're going to go to God for your solution. You're not going to go to human beings. So I really hope your God can do something to help you because though I am the king, I can't do nothing but put you in that den alliance. Because they tricked me. They tricked me so they could hurt you. And now I know that's what they did, but I can't do nothing to help you. I hope you God can. Because my hands are tied. In this land, once a law is put into effect, once a law is in writing, even if the law is unjust, even if the law is wrong, I can't change it. I can't do anything about it. Nobody can fix this. Only a God can fix this. I hope your God can do something. Daniel, can your God do something? After all, when you're hard to eat it, you didn't stop doing what you always do. When you heard the rule that you were not allowed to pray, you got down on 
your knees and you prayed in the morning, you prayed in the afternoon, and you prayed in the evening. You prayed in a way that you face Jerusalem, which is symbolic for facing God. You didn't give up on God because you knew God would not give up on you. I'm saying something, church. What I'm saying is the very things that we think are passive, the very things that we think don't make a difference are the ultimate acts of resistance. What is it that you do regularly to connect with God? Do you pray with your children? Even though your children are grown and they got their own children. Do you read the scripture and have conversations with folk about what you read? Do you pray on a regular basis? Whatever it is that you do to connect with God on a regular basis is called a discipline of faith. And if you are like Daniel, and you're not willing to let, to let anybody or anything interrupt your connection time with God. Nobody's rule can stop you from praying, only you can stop you from praying. Nobody's rule can stop you from studying the scripture, only you can stop you from studying the scripture. Nobody's rule can stop you from pouring love and strength and courage into one another except you. Folk can create rules that are unjust. Folk can create rules that they think can't be broken. But guess what? Even if the rule can't be broken, even if the consequences cannot be changed, God can still work through your trouble and turn it around. Watch what happened for Daniel, right? Watch what happened for Daniel. He didn't do anything new, y'all. He really didn't. He heard that somebody told him that he couldn't pray. And do you know what he did? He did what he did every day. He did what he had been doing for 60 years. He did what he did when he was a young teenager and he was ripped from Jerusalem. He did what he did when he was a young man in the Babylonian kingdom. He prayed every day three times a day, and he had been doing it for so long that it became not just habit, it became an act of resistance. An act that says hate does not win. An act that says you can change my name, but you can't change who I am in the sight of God. An act that says death does not have the final say. An act that says there is still hope, there is still peace, there is still joy, an act of resistance. That doesn't even look like resistance. I mean, I don't know how many of y'all are like me and, and your reaction to this story was, really all he did was pray? He didn't say nothing to nobody. He didn't tell the king that the king was wrong. He didn't tell, tell, tell the other advisors to get out of his house. He, he didn't do any of that. He didn't go low when folk went low. Instead of going, going low, he just raised his hands up high and said, the Lord I serve is still worthy to be praised in the good times, in the bad times, in the in-between times. Not only will I pray, I will pray, and I will praise. Not only will I pray, I will pray, and I will praise. You won't stop me from connecting to the God who loves me through the good times and the bad times. You won't stop me from connecting with God because my connection with God will save me. Even if the lion tries to eat me, even if I have to perish, let me perish. I know that's what Esther said, but it's the same story. It's the same song. The truth is, if our relationship with God is tight and it's right, the very things that we've been doing on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, to make sure that we are still connected with God are the very things that will get us through troubling times. 
And wait a minute, hold up, watch this. They are also the very things that will so give us such a strong witness that the very people who think that they can take us out will end up having to say, there is a God who saves, there is a God who heals, there is a God who restores, and no weapon formed against those who are caught up in the hands of this God will ever prosper. Seriously, church, I believe that the world would be filled with more peace. I believe that the world would be filled with more joy. I would believe that the world would be filled with more hate if we would stop allowing folk to make us think that prayer doesn't work to change the world. If we wouldn't believe the hype that the only way to fight a battle is with our fist, if we wouldn't believe the hype that the only way to bring justice to an unjust world is to scream and to fight, sometimes all you need to do is say to God, I can't handle it, I can't do it, I can't fix it, but you can, I know you can, I know you will. Have your way, God, do your God thing in me, do your God thing in the world. Sometimes, if we admit that we ain't in charge, sometimes, if we admit that the big and baddest thing in front of us ain't that big and ain't that bad. Sometimes, if we would trust that the God that was with us on Sunday would be with us on Monday, would be with us on Tuesday, would be with us on Wednesday, would be with us on Thursday, would be with us on Friday, will be with us on Saturday, will be with us not just in the good times and not just in the bad times, but in all of those times in between the good and the bad. Because we don't just serve an on-time God, we serve a real-time God. We serve a God who specializes in breaking into our world and showing us and everybody else that God isn't finished with us yet. You want to resist? You want to resist the enemy of God? Don't give up on the things that God has used to keep you. Don't you dare stop praying. Don't you dare stop studying the word of God. Don't you dare stop singing. Don't you dare stop dancing. Don't you dare stop praising. Don't you dare stop encouraging. Don't you dare stop hoping. Don't you dare stop loving. Don't you dare stop healing because it's those very things that allow you to connect to God that won't just allow you to connect to God, but that will convince somebody that God is worth trying. It's the ultimate act of resistance in a world that acts just like the Borg. I'm a sci-fi fan. Um, and my favorite of all villains in all of Star Trek lore are the Borg. Because the Borg come into everybody's reality and they try and take over everybody and take away individuality and thought and beliefs. And when somebody tries to resist, do you know what their tag phrase is? Resistance is futile. Guess what? The world may try and convince us that resisting is futile, but God proves every time that when you resist for God, God makes miracles happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you resist for God, God makes miracles happen. When you resist for God, God makes miracles happen. So you know what? I'm ready. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to engage in the ultimate acts of resistance? Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to praise? Are you ready to hope? Are you ready to sing? 
Are you ready to dance? Are you ready to love? Are you ready to encourage? Because if you dare to pray, if you dare to praise, if you dare to hope, if you dare to encourage, if you dare not to give up, not to back down, but to continue in the very acts of connection to God, you will resist. And God will work miracles through your resistance. This is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise to God. Amen.